Welcome to the Local Connection with the Giblin Gals. This episode, we have Leslie Wingrowich, who is the author of Live Like You're Not Scared. Come on and join us to unlock your potential. Let's get started. Welcome to the Local Connection with the Giblin Gals, joining forces with my amazing mother to bring you illuminating interviews and invaluable marketing insights. Get ready to ignite your business with the Local Connection. Well, thank you so much, Leslie, for being here and for giving us your energy and your time. How are you today? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing very well, thank you. That's awesome. So, Leslie, I'm fascinated by your story and I'm sure you didn't wake up one morning and go, you know what, this is where my life is going to be today. I know this is what, I'm, you know, you don't wake up as a small child and go, this is what my life's going to be. What got you to do what you're doing right now? You're an author, you're a health advocate. Talk to me about that. Jen, you are so right. No, I certainly didn't plan this. And that's what the book is all about, helping people to come back to what their heart longs for and um, the book is about my journey and uh, three months after the birth of my second child I woke up to realize that I was paralyzed on the right side of my body and so no it was not planned um, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and told by my neurologist that I would probably never walk again so being a former ICU and trauma nurse I decided to reject that diagnosis and go back to my roots uh, both spiritually and uh, my parents were always raising me to follow my heart's desire. And I know that many women in particular, uh, men of course as well, that we fall off our beaten trail. And um, I, I, the hopes of the book is to bring people back to that path that, that they long for. It's fascinating you should bring that up. Your comment about, I rejected the diagnosis. I have a similar story. Um, I was told May of 2023 that it's not uh, if I'm in a wheelchair, it's when I'm in a wheelchair. And both of us happily walked into this room today and both of us are going to happily walk out of this room today. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that diagnosis either. And mine has more to do with back issues, not, not about a, a disease that, again, I, I firmly believe your mind has the great ability to override a lot of the things that you hear if you choose it. You've got such an optimistic personality. You remind me of Nick. Nick just wrote a book, Optimism uh, 2033. How did you find optimism with a diagnosis like that? I didn't have a choice. I realized that I had to make a decision and it was sink or swim. And I had two small children to care for and then my husband as well. But coming back to what we were talking about previously, Jen, about our life's path, when I was a little girl, I certainly didn't envision my life disabled and crawling around on the floor uh, and not being able to care for my own family. So I decided to reject fear, which is why I titled the book, Live Like You're Not Scared. I wasn't going to live in fear and I wasn't going to live my life um, through the lens of another's prognosis. I decided that I'm in the driver's seat, as we all are, for our lives. And I believed very strongly that I had brought this diagnosis, unfortunately, on myself. And through a great deal of research, I discovered that the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis and many others um, are as a result of not living your best life and one decision after another that may not be um, in line with our, our true self. So I got back to basics and one of the things I did actually was I started journaling nightly and I could see the blessings in my life. Even when I was disabled and crawling and in excruciating pain, I could still see the, the blessings in my life, the laughter of my children, um, the strength of uh, family and friends around supporting me. And I realized that we are in control. We have the reins of our own life. We are in the driver's seat. That's absolutely phenomenal. Mind over matter. Mm -hmm. Mind over matter. I have that tattooed actually on me on the back of my arm. It's yeah. mind over matter. Yes, she does. I do. She does. Yep. Yeah. And those who mind don't matter. 
Those who matter don't mind, and those who mind don't down. matter. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. write that down. <laughs> write that down. So, for those people that feel like they're maybe not living in their authentic path, what's one thing that maybe our audience member can kind of take on their own sort of power and their own mission right now to kind of start steering them that way? Victoria, I actually made a list. I just made a list of all the things that my heart desired when I was very young. And I realized I could see some of the things on the list I had accomplished that were very important to me. It was important to me to have children. It was important to me to be married. Check, check. But there were some things that I was not um, doing. And one of them was writing. I always wanted to be a writer. And I write about it in the book. It was actually a public relations professor told me that I would never be a writer. And as a result, I buried that dream. So coming back to your question, Victoria, I would encourage individuals to write a list of what my mother has always guided me, what makes your heart sing. So um, I decided that writing makes my heart sing. So I started to incorporate these um, activities in my life that had fallen to the wayside because you know, we all have busy lives and um, uh, responsibilities that we have. And I started to resurrect those those uh, things that had been buried, those activities, and as a result, I began to resurrect myself and resurrect my soul. That's beautiful. So if it's in your mind, it's a dream. If it's written down, it's a goal, and it's accomplished then. Is that what I'm taking away from That's this? what, uh, absolutely, Jen. Well said, well said, yes. Fantastic. So you've overcome a lot. There are people who are going to say, well, Leslie, I don't have MS, or I don't have Jen's back issues, or I don't have concussion trauma that Victoria's had. I don't know if I should take the time now for myself to look after myself. What would you say to them? I would say that life is a gift, and every day that we're here on, on this earth, navigating and growing and learning, it's to be explored. And I didn't appreciate that fully until I was diagnosed. And I, was, I would encourage others, don't wait for the diagnosis. Don't wait for the bad news phone call. Um, don't wait for, for our time on end, for our time on this earth to end. Take action now because I am so proud and, and, and pleased to announce that I'm living my best life because I took the time to evaluate what was important to me. So I would encourage others, what is important to you? And if it is important, then why aren't you doing it for yourself? It, it does come down to self-love, doesn't it? And um, looking inward and realizing that if we don't take time for ourselves, who will? You know, we come first. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's really difficult to pour from a cup when yours is empty. And you got to give that back to yourself and you got to be able to fill that up. Whatever that looks like for you, that looks a little different for everyone. And I think we have different options for what that is. If that's writing, if that's working out or going for a walk or sitting in the sun, praying, all these different options. So thank you for that. And just reminding, you know, it's February. It's the theme of love that just passed. So that's beautiful. So what other communities do you like to get involved with and what other businesses or communities do you really like to support? I like to support people that are lost. I think it's important to look inward and find that self-love because one person can make a big difference to the community. That's awesome. So if I want to know more about you, if I want to learn how to live like I'm not scared anymore, how do I find you? You can find me on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and also on my website, lesliewingerwitch.com. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate having you here. You were so inspirational. Uh, your words, the fact that you're willing to share with us could not have been more appropriate. Thank you. Jen and Victoria, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Local Connection. Remember, implement those marketing gems and watch your business soar. I'm Jen, signing off with inspiration. Until next time.